Well, good morning and welcome into Calvary Online from wherever you are this morning. We just want to say we're so grateful that you chose to spend your long weekend Sunday morning with us. My name's Andrew. I'm the pastor here at Calvary. This is my daughter Peyton who's hanging out having a little snack. And we are so excited about this morning's service to the people of Calvary. I just want to say happy 90th anniversary. What a, a remarkable milestone to celebrate. This morning we have a treat for you. We've put together all sorts of special pieces, some familiar faces from our past and from our current days at Calvary. We're so excited to celebrate. Uh, to our guests, I just want to encourage you. We would love you to connect with our church family and to someday get a chance to meet you. For now, we're stuck online, but we would love you to just take the description below and go to the guest link and, and take a moment to introduce yourself. It'd be great to have a conversation with you. Enjoy the rest of the service to start things off for our 90th celebration. Uh, we're going to take you back to day one with Ms. Mary de Montmorency. Enjoy. Taking you back to the beginning, the little mission on King Street. The initial congregation included three men and their families. Mr. Frank Hewen, Mr. Robert de Montmorency, Mr. Otto Rowland, Mr. Gordon Beamer, Mr. Russell Thompson wanted to help. With services in the morning and evening and Sunday school in the afternoon, it was a full day. I remember the old wooden floor with long brown curtains separating the classes. And I remember running down the street anxious to get my prize for inviting a friend to Sunday school. <clears throat> but with this small congregation, the men stepped out in faith and purchased the old Wesley Methodist Church on Queen Street. And the mission became an established church with the Associated Gospel Churches of Canada. My desire was to follow the Lord and serve him in this church. I met up with one of the de Montmorency boys, and after a few years, we got married in this church, and we worked together in several positions in the church. The Lord blessed us with two girls, and we still made time to carry on most of our commitments. Then the church needed a lot of repair. The old church served us well. It was time to move on. It was then decided to build a new Calvary Church, Gospel Church, on the former Frank Kewen property, one of the founders of the work, which was for sale and was now purchased by us, where we are now. We have been involved in many areas over the years in this church, and I am glad I am still able to attend and celebrate 90 years with joy and thanksgiving to God the history of the past 90 years. Hi, Hi it's us, Hi. the Martins. <laughs> Hi, it's Hi. us, the Martins. <laughs> if you forgot, this is Drew. He's five. <laughs> Hope's seven. Allie's turning three this weekend. And we're, we're us. Let praises echo 
procreation Some were meant to persist Of all the bells rung from a thousand steeples None rings truer than this It's all God's children singing glory, glory Hallelujah, he reigns He reigns It's all God's children singing glory, glory Hallelujah, he reigns He reigns It's all God's children singing glory, glory Hallelujah, he reigns He reigns It's all God's children singing glory, glory Hallelujah, he reigns Calvary Gospel Church, happy 90th anniversary. Laura and I were your pastor and wife for uh, nine years, so 10% of your history, we were there. And we have such great memories of uh, our nine years in Beamsville uh, from 2000 to 2009. And so uh, we were invited to come back and be with you on your 90th, and we appreciate the invitation from the pastor and the board. And we were so looking forward to that, but with COVID and lockdown and everything else, it's not possible. So we're just sending a greeting and uh, we look forward to being with you again uh, whenever uh, travel restrictions are lifted. We just wanna say happy anniversary, 90 years. I remember hearing about Calvary Gospel long before we lived there and knowing the impact that it's always had in the community has been a blessing and has been an encouragement even before we were there. And then to be a part of the life there and a part of that impact and, and just seeing the people that we got to come in contact with and be a church family with um, are wonderful memories for us and for our family. We just, we just treasure every single day that we were there. So we thank you for that time. But what we look forward to is the future. And we know that God has some amazing things in store for you. And we're just, excited to see it and to hear about it and even now we get to go online and and see your services sometimes if you like we're a part of it thank you 
for being that light. And we truly thank our God on every remembrance of you. So yeah, even though we're here in Edmonton, a long ways away, we still have fond memories of our time at Calvary. And uh, we trust that God will keep you safe and continue to use you and your church in great ways uh, in this coming year. Blessings. Good morning, friends. My name is Lauren Redinger. Pleasure to come into your homes this morning, even if it's a, a virtual way. We're glad to be with you from Calvary Gospel Church, Beamsville. It was my pleasure to be pastor of Calvary Gospel back in the 1960s and 70s. And uh, I want to share with you a little bit about how things were back in those days. I've been asked to do that. So I'm going to bring a couple of items to you. One, what things were like back in those days. And then I'm going to say some things about the various changes. In fact, that's my key word here throughout my uh, message this morning for about the next 10 minutes or so. Uh, change, that word change, because that's what it's all about. What we were back in the 60s and 70s and uh, what we are now here in the 2020s. It was a pleasure to have been pastor of this group. We had great days and I want to share some of them with you. Basically, back in 1967, when my wife and family came to Beamsville, uh, I found that I was amongst mostly farm people. Just about everybody in the congregation had an attachment to a farm. If they didn't own it, they worked there. And a number, almost all of our people, and there were about 90 or 100 of us, I suppose, uh, we enjoyed so much the pastor here, and I want to share some of those things with you as what they were back in those days. First of all, let me say that we had a full Sunday school hour before church for every age group. We also had a wonderful morning service, and then we had also an evening service. You might be interested to know that we used basically uh, hymnals. We always had maybe an occasional chorus, but, but not very many. We had evening services as well every week, and we had almost as many people for our evening service as we had for our morning service, and that was always a delight. We had great singing. We had both organ and piano, and they played very well, and we had testimonies in the evening, and it was a, a, all around it was a very fine service, and we enjoyed it very much. Tuesday mornings, we had a ladies' Bible class. We had quite a few ladies that attended that. There'd be 20 to 30 ladies. And I remember uh, teaching that myself for, for a while. And uh, about the time we decided to build a new building back in, the, in about 1969 or 1970, uh, I would be working here on the building and then I would just put down my tools and I'd go down to the old church and teach that Bible class to the ladies. And then I'd come back and uh, uh, pick up my tools and go to work again. That was a delightful time. I remember that significantly. We also had a, a good, a nice uh, couples program. We had different things uh, each month, and we had a lot of young couples that came to that, and it was a very profitable experience to have this. Another thing that interested me and interested our church people was that of evangelism. There was a lot of evangelism that went on, I want to communicate the fact that we had a revival time about the 1970s. Uh, the revival began out west in, in an alliance church there and it moved east. And so for the next couple of years in our congregation, there was significant movement of God's spirit and it was a delight to experience and you would have as well. You might be interested to know that uh, Back in those days, we even had something of a, of a dress code. Not very stringent, but nonetheless, we expected the people who were going to be in leadership and be on the platform to dress well and to, to uh, be an example to the rest of us. And when we'd have a communion service, our men were with coats and ties and our ushers likewise. And those are some of the things that uh, were kind of 
done without anybody saying anything. It had kind of been a traditional thing. But, uh, you know, there were many other things that we did, but I wanted to share some of the some of the things that we do now that we didn't do then. I think that's only fair. But I want to say before we move on to that that we had, I think, more in-house meetings back in those days. We had a lot of things going on in the evening, on the weekends. We did a considerable amount of, of inter-home exchange, I think quite a bit more than now. But uh, I'll come to that just a little bit. So. Change, of course, began over the years, and you, uh, most any of our people would tell you that most of the changes, I think, were for good. But I want to share some of the things that we do now that uh, possibly we didn't do then. You're much aware, of course, that the population is, is uh, way up in the billions now, about seven billion people in Canada now, or not in Canada, but over the world. and. Uh, a lot of people have moved into this area, and this has made a significant difference as far as change is concerned. And we were beginning to make changes even before we moved into our new building back in 1974, along about that time. I wanted to mention too that in the old building, we had a choir. Every Sunday morning was a nice choir. We had a lot of musical people and they enjoyed the music, and they participated to the full, and we appreciated that very much. But now I wanted to say some things about the, uh, what's going on now at Calvary Gospel Church. Things have changed considerably. I would have to, if I were pastoring, I would have to get used to some of these things, but nonetheless, being still in the church and just kind of looking on from the outside in, I've gotten used to some of these changes. One of the change, of course, is, is in the services, the service structure. Uh, there is no evening service anymore. Uh, that is on a Sunday evening. There is no, no Sunday evening services. There are, there's no Sunday school as such. The, the Sunday school is uh, mainly during the church service when people who come to the church for worship take their youngsters downstairs. But there's no... There are no youth classes, there are no adult classes like we did back in the days when we had a number of adult classes and youth classes as well. But uh, things change, been, they've been replaced by home Bible studies. We did have the occasional Bible study back in those days in a home, but mainly um, it was done in the church. I remember starting a little Bible Institute, and we had uh, people come on a Tuesday night that wanted to just learn more about the Word of God, and I taught that as well, and that went so very well. And in the meantime, you have to understand the church continued to grow, to grow, to grow, and we appreciated that so much. People responded. They, we liked the, uh, the music. Music here has changed considerably. Uh, worship services mainly are comprised of, of uh, choruses. We have no organ anymore. There's piano. Sometimes even we don't have a piano. It'll be just guitars, and that took some getting used to, but the people, I believe, for the most part, have gotten used to that. The uh, evening worship services, as I mentioned, are spasmodic. Once in a while, there'll be something for the youth on a Sunday night, but not for adults as such. Another thing that I do miss, and we may be doing something about it in our church in this day and age, is, is a missions conference. We used to have several days of mission conferences. And another thing we used to have was, was evangelistic services. We would run them for a week or so. And um, we'd have different evangelists come and they were always very productive times. In our missions conferences, we'd have missionaries from a variety of missions all come in at once. We'd have uh, banquets and, and meetings, and it was a, a delightful time. We do have missionaries come. We're still into missions, lots of missions, and, uh, but our missions are just, uh, uh, it's, it's a different, we handling missions is different, of course. That has changed. They'd have to speak for themselves, but now we have so many uh, electronics, eh? Electronics has overtaken us. 
or taken us over, I'm not sure which, but uh, they've been a real plus on the mission field, I know that, when you can when you can speak to somebody by texting over overseas and then get a response immediately, as it were. All of this has its pluses, I know that. But it's, it's hard for somebody like myself to make all these adjustments as time goes on, but we have to. I do have a computer, I've got an e-tablet and so on, I'm trying to learn all of this and I enjoy it very, very much. But one of the things I've noticed greatly so about uh, back then and now is the, the level of distractions. Out there for the Christian, the average Christian, there are no end of distractions. Of uh, We've got abundant television now and all these electronic items, the Bluetooth and whatever you want to call it. There's so many, many of them and it's very difficult to keep up. But uh, we're working on it. Sometimes I've asked myself, after I put all this together, I ask myself, um, is it better or did we just make a lateral move? Are we just kind of keeping up with what's going on in the world so we don't get behind? Is the way we're handling worship and the way we're handling Sunday school, the way we're handling youth, is it the same now as it was then? And all I can say to that is, is something that Jesus said in His Word, and I'm sure there were changes taking place in those days. He said, a tree is known by its fruit. And that's absolutely right. A tree is known by its fruit. If, this, if the tree, the church, is better now than it was then, we'll know by its fruit. Are, the people, are we winning people? Are people coming to the Lord? Are we standing for the Word of God? Have we changed? Well, we got all these Bible versions, and people, some have this, some have that. I don't know if that's a plus or not. Uh, you have to decide. I use a, an NIV quite a bit myself, but I still like reading sometimes in, in the King James. I was born and raised on that after I became a Christian in my late teens. That was pretty well the only thing that existed. So uh, I had to get used to it. And when these new ones came in, I, I used them, but I pretty well settled on the NIV. That seems to be quite a good, uh, quite a good translation, I appreciate. But those are some of the changes that had to take place and are still taking place. But as, so long as we stand on the Word of God and we get our encouragement and our, our uh, nourishment from the Word of God, I, I think we're on, on, on a good, good course and I want us to be I want us to be aware though that what we do is only proven, as Jesus said, by a tree, a fruit is known, a tree is known by the fruit that it bears. And that's what we have to ask ourselves. I think that's a I think that's a, a good place to to uh, a good scale. That's a good understanding to have, is what we're doing. Is it a lateral move or is it a forward move? And that's, that's a bottom line question and I, I trust by the grace of God that we can move ahead for the glory of God. I thought of a nice verse or two I'd like to close with and that is from uh, 2 Timothy 2.19 which has always been a challenge to me. The man of God says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal, having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his, and let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. We know this, friends, there's coming a great change. Jesus Christ is coming again, and he's going to change everything. And it pays to be ready to know the Savior, and I trust you do as well, to welcome Him into your heart, into your family, into your business, into all you say and do. That's where He wants to be. He wants to be your Savior, your guide, your shepherd. He wants to give you His Holy Spirit so that you can move ahead for the glory of God. Thank you so much for listening to what was, what is, and what will be. We're not through changing. God bless you and thank you for your time.
Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, more Great is thy faith. 
Well, I've been listening to that song over and over again this morning on repeat, getting ready for this message. I can't think of a better song to represent 90 years of God's faithfulness here at Calvary than the song, Great Is Thy Faithfulness. And before I forget, I want to say a special thank you to all those who participated in this morning's service. Uh, it was great to see Pastor Kevin and Laura Schuler again, and to have a message from Pastor Redinger, as well as Mary de Montmorency, to hear another song from Ben Martin. Uh, you might not realize this, but there's a whole team of people behind the scenes that you don't get to see on camera who are helping us now to piece these services together and bring them to you on Sundays. So thank you for your work, as well as all those who sang in the song, Great Is Thy Faithfulness. Uh, we also had a fellow AGC pastor. His name is Dave Severance. He's at Compass Point in Burlington. He helped us to piece that whole Great Is Thy Faithfulness song together. So thank you, Dave, for all of your help. If you've been around churches for any length of time, you may have heard the word hallelujah. It's from the Hebrew Bible or our English Old Testament, and it simply means praise the Lord. Mornings like what we've had here today, anniversary Sundays, they remind us of all the reasons that we can praise the Lord. Psalm 117, it's the shortest psalm in the whole Bible. It says this, praise the Lord, all you nations, extol him, all you peoples, or commend him, bring him glory, applaud him. It's as if our whole lives are supposed to be spent just clapping. Well done, God. Extol him, all you people. Why? For great is his love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. So praise the Lord. Hallelujah. One of the praise igniting devices that God gave us is simply the ability to remember. Remember what God has done. That's what mornings like this morning are all about. We've sung these songs, we've told these stories to remind ourselves our God has a perfect love, a committed love, unconditional, sacrificial, prevailing love. And He's also faithful, He's committed. He's trustworthy. He's dependable. Uh, three times in this tiny little psalm, God is described as the Lord. In your Bible, it's probably all cap lock letters. It's trying to tell us it's not just some God who's loving and faithful. It's the Lord, the master, the one who created us and revealed himself to us, who wants to have a relationship with us. This principle of remembering, it's always been important to God's people. There's this story in the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, the Israelites are at Mount Sinai. Maybe you've heard of that mountain before. And they've just been delivered from slavery uh, in Egypt. It's called the Exodus. And then just before God brings them into the promised land, into this, this place that he would bring them to, this beautiful land that he was going to give them, he tells them, Moses stops. And before they move forward, he looks back. He tells them to remember. Here's what Deuteronomy 8 says happened at the mountain, starting at verse 10. When you have eaten and satisfied, praise the Lord your God. There it is again, for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws and his decrees that I'm giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Moses goes on to, to remind the Israelites of all that God had done to deliver them and to save them. Verse 18, he says this, But remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gave you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. Uh, years later, Israel would finally be able to go into the promised land. And after their first big success, Joshua is their new leader. He stops. They've crossed the Jordan River. There's that big event. And then Joshua says, okay, we need to remember. God has told us to remember. He builds this monument, this memorial of 12 stones so that the Israelites can remember what God has done. And then he says, when your children ask, what is this pillar about? What is this memorial about? 
you should remind them, God dried up the Jordan River so that we could cross it. Tell them the story. Remind them of the story. He finishes in Joshua 4, 24 with these words. He did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord your God, so that you'd always revere him and have this respect and this awe for the Lord. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm forgetful. I know, I don't like to admit it. Especially during this sheltering in place time that we've had. People will say, hey, when did you send that email? Or when were we supposed to meet? And you're thinking, I don't know, it was sometime in the month of COVID. Do you remember that time from March until summer or fall or whenever it's going to be? That month that just seemed to go on forever? That's what my memory feels like right now. Or maybe you've had this experience before. You go downstairs to get a snack or a drink, a cup of tea, and then something distracts you. For us, it's probably the dog barking outside and you wanna stop them from annoying the neighbors. So you go outside and when you come back, you say, why did I come down here again? You forget what you came down for. And seniors, just so you know, that doesn't just happen to you, that happens to young people too. It's as if God knew that we have this tendency to forget, or at least to become distracted, to stop applauding Him for everything that He's done for us. We stop praising Him. We quit giving Him the credit for His faithfulness. And so God built into the rhythm of our lives this idea of remembrance. And here's why remembering isn't just something that God's people long ago should do. Here's why it's so important for us to remember today. And here's what I want you to get this whole morning. Remembering God's faithfulness in the past inspires us to trust Him with our future. Remembering God's faithfulness in the past inspires us to trust Him with our future. When we look back on all God has done, it should motivate us to move forward with confidence in Him. You see, looking back isn't just to celebrate what God has done at some point in our history. It's helpful for our present. It's helpful for our future because when we're facing uncertainty like we are right now in these days, and we say, I'm trying to live my life for God, but I'm just not sure how, we can stop and we can reflect and we can look at our lives and say, well, here is how God worked in the past. I know I can depend on him for this situation as well. I know I can trust him, so that's what I'm going to do. God has been incredibly faithful to Calvary. In our first 90 years, we have so many stories, so many of these memorials as Joshua set up, these piles of stones that we can look back and say, do you remember when this church started with those faithful few families? Do you remember when our Sunday school was brimming with all sorts of people? Do you remember the day in 1974 when this building was put together by some of our very own people? My, was God faithful. He wants to build this pattern of remembering into our lives so that when we move forward, we do so in faith. And we know that we can depend on Him as long as we always trust Him. For those of us who would call ourselves followers of Jesus, Jesus Himself, God's own Son, who came to earth to reveal God to us perfectly, He left us with a perfect example of how we can remember him. Before he left earth, he gathered together his followers, his guys, his core group, and he said, I want you to remember me. I'm about to go to a cross and to die as a sacrifice for your sins. And he grabbed a piece of bread and he said, let this bread, when you have this meal, remind you of the sacrifice I'm about to make for you so you don't have to be punished for your sin. And then he picked up a cup and he said, anytime you drink this cup and have this meal, remember my blood was spilt so that your sins could be forgiven forever. I want you to have this meal. And when you have this meal, remember what I've done for you. And so at Calvary, once a month, we do what's called communion or the Lord's Supper. And we remember Jesus' sacrifice for us. And it causes us in a very practical way to remember how God is faithful. It's our Mount Sinai moment, if you will. It's our memorial at the Jordan River, the pile of stones to tell us God is faithful. We can trust him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for his love, his faithful love toward us. 
His faithfulness endures forever. Let me ask you, what are you praising God for today? If you're a guest and we can help you with what it means to have a relationship with Jesus, or we can even help you to become more than a guest, somebody who's part of our church family, we would love to do just that. Click on the guest link in the description below. Let me pray for us. God, thank you for this morning of celebration, of remembering your love and your faithfulness, your commitment to us as a church. Uh, We haven't always got it perfectly right, but we are doing our best to trust you and to depend on you. And there are so many ways that you've been faithful. You've been working, as we heard from Pastor Redinger, as we got to see uh, Pastor Kevin again and Laura and hear from Mary de Montmorency, as well as Ben Martin and our own people today who are reminding us you're still working. You're not done. And so, Lord, we pray uh, that you would find us humbled and faithful and in awe that you would choose to work through us. We pray other people in our town and our region would come to know Jesus as well. Maybe even people listening this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you this week. Mm -hmm.